metal mud guards. Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to Stand Up Moto. And today I want to introduce you to a bit of classic metric royalty, the Yamaha XVZ 1300 V4 Royal Star. Now this video came about from a very astute viewer who noticed this bike in the back of one of my review videos. If you're a motorcyclist, you would be aware that Japanese bikes, older Japanese bikes, especially those that are a little bit unique, are gaining in popularity. They're becoming quite the collector's item. So here's a look at one of my older bikes. So this actual bike is a 1996 model. It's 2024 now. It's out of my own private collection of bikes and in a couple more birthdays, it's going to be 30 years old. I have had it forever and I just love riding it. No matter where you park this bike, people want to come up, have a look and start talking about it. We'll have a bit of a general look around the bike, put it through the hills, do an acceleration test. And I guess what better place to start than this beautiful overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, V4 motor. The motor is a V4, it's just shy of 1300 cc. That's about 79 cubic inches, if you're into cubic inches. Horsepower wise, it's not massive. It's about 75 horsepower in standard form. This bike is relatively standard, apart from the exhaust pipes and the air box opened up a little bit to allow it to breathe. She's probably up around 80 horsepower with 112 Newton meters of torque. And that all comes in pretty low, about 3,700 RPM. I'll give her a quick blast up to about 100 kilometers an hour. That's at the top of the dial there. That's about 62 mile per hour. Now this is certainly not a drag bike by any means, but look not bad for a, a 1996 320 kilos, that's about 705 pound cruiser. Five speed gearbox with fifth being an overdrive. It's got one of these heel and toe type gear levers. Look, I don't really use the heel section. I just do the normal foot underneath and foot on top on the gear lever. Nice, comfy running boards on the side here, and yes, get it into a bend, hit a dip in a corner, and they will definitely hit. The side stand is excellent. It's got this little section here for your heel, and you don't even need to look at it to deploy. And you'll notice as we continue with this review, if chrome is your thing, this has got it in spades. Being an almost 30 year old bike now, this is simplicity at its best. That's my little throttle lock that you may have seen in my other videos that I like to have. Um, start button, kill, engine kill, master cylinder for the brakes, nothing there, a little aftermarket clock on there, one single dial with a few warning lights at the bottom. On the left hand side, you've just got the standard indicators, you've got the horn, high and low beam, that's about it. It is simplicity at its best. Being a self-confessed bikeaholic, I have a few items that depending on what bike is the flavor of the month with me, I swap from bike to bike. So we'll have a look at the back here. I've removed the rear seat, of course, that comes on the back of these as a standard thing with a little backrest, etc. And these panniers are my old K-Drive panniers. I put this little carrier on the back here so you can remove them like so. I've made up these carrier brackets here so I can fit, fit these to quite a variety of my bikes. It's a shaft drive, as you can see down in here. And the pipes themselves, although they look standard, they're actually called a stain tune pipe. They're an aftermarket pipe. Um, it just allows it to breathe that little bit better. 
I remember reading this article from Cycle Talk. It was printed back in 1996 when they tested the uh, the Royal Star. And it says the massive V4 that throbs and shudders with every firing of every cylinder, bellowing NASCAR quality exhaust music in living four pipe stereo. What more could anyone ask? And you know, it really has got that. I hope you've got good speakers on what you're watching this. Have a listen. It truly is a special sound, if you like that sort of thing, which of course I do. Still has the old school halogen type light for a headlight high and low beam and a set of, believe it or not, sealed beam driving lights. And there's the Royal Star. And of course, it wouldn't be a Yamaha without a few quirky little things. Something of course you won't see nowadays, and that's the ignition switch. It's to the under and rear of the seat. Um, you get used to it. It's, it's a funny thing though, when someone gets on the bike and they're looking for the ignition switch, it's tucked away down there. To remove the seat, the key once again here on the left hand side, this time just turn, that unclips and the seat comes off. Under the seat, there's the battery, nice and easy to access. That's the original toolkit still in there. Yamaha decided to put some pretty big rubber on this. Well, on the front anyway, I guess the rear is not on today's standards, but let's have a look at the tires. The front tire is a fair old chunk of rubber. It's a 150-80-16. That's a big tire. Um, I run the Dunlop 404s. They're a Japanese made tire and seem to suit this well. Rear tires are 150-90-15. So it's a 15 inch. It's an alloy spoked rim with the white wall tires. It looks really nice. So I've just pulled up for a quick break during filming. It's about 41 degrees Celsius here at the moment. That would be 105, 106 if you're in the Fahrenheit zone. Fortunately, it's dry heat, but um, yeah, she's pretty warm, hence the reason the hair's wet. Anyway, not the reason I stopped. Something I wanted to point out. Now, metal mud guards. Usually they're all plastic. Even the side covers themselves, metal. And even the rear guard, metal, something. The fuel tank is of course metal. That's not as rare. A lot of bikes have got metal fuel tanks, but even the little chrome surround that goes around the speedometer, um, I was going to say instruments, but there's not really much there. There's only really the speedometer and a couple of warning lights and an overdrive light. You may have noticed this little orange light on, uh, the one I'm pointing at here. It's an overdrive light. Top gear on this bike, fifth gear, is a 0 0.906. It's an overdrive. Tells you when you're in overdrive, but it doubles as a motor warning light. If it's flashing, you've got things you need to check. Um, but there's very little plastic on this bike whatsoever. It's liquid cooled, as you can see with this radiator down the front here. So temperature, not an issue. Doesn't matter if the day is hot. Doesn't matter if the day is cold. The motor remains at a constant temperature. The V4 also has a beautiful burble on deceleration. Up the front, twin 298 mil disc rotors. That's just shy of 12 inches. You've got four pot calipers, one either side, and yeah, stops pretty good. Something you would very rarely see on the back of any motorbike nowadays, motorcycle, a 320 millimeter rear disc rotor. I mean, that's almost 13 inches, single piston caliper on there, but it is an enormous rear disc rotor. A couple of other things I wanted to point out in regards to the motor, it's, it's a pretty simple unit. It's got four valves per cylinder, and of course there's four of them, four, eight, 12, 16. There's a lot of valves there. It has four Makuni 32 mil carburetors, um, so not fuel injected. It's before the era of fuel injection. As we mentioned earlier, there is absolutely no doubt that 
Japanese bikes, older Japanese bikes, especially those that are unique, are becoming more and more collectible. The motor that's in this cruiser is actually a derivative of Yamaha's famous VMAX motor, which just adds to its appeal. Now, while I was out recording this video on this beautiful day, albeit a little bit hot, I might add, I came across this sign on the side of the road that says 80 kilometers per hour. That's about 50 mile per hour. In fact, I'll enlarge it in case you're watching this on a telephone so you can read what it says. Now, personal opinion, I think this was extremely unfair. I think it could have read at least 85 kilometers per hour. No, look, Harley Davidson riders, don't go getting your knickers in a knot. I'm just having a bit of fun. It's actually leading me into something that happened while recording. I ran into, not literally, an English chap, as in English from the UK, riding an American bike, a Harley Davidson Road King, and he was touring Australia. How cool is that? Anyway, hell of a nice bloke, and he managed to get the pair of us out of a very sticky situation, and that will be coming up in a future video. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this look at my old 96 Yamaha Royal Star. I'm going to slip a few of these in with bikes in my collection, my old Norton Triumph, as well as my regular bike reviews. If you did, don't forget to give us the thumbs up and subscribe. But I guess until next time, cheers.